In a previous video, I talked about the importance of the foundation of a low histamine diet. While it certainly took the pressure off my daughter's body while she healed, it wasn't the key to healing that I first thought. In today's video, I'm going to share my healing mindset and the three main things I'm focusing on to help my daughter's body and my body return to wellness and balance. Could one or more of these suggestions be the next piece of the puzzle that you need in healing? Hi, I'm Monique Loria. Over the past two years, I've received what feels like my master's in histamine from the School of Hard Knocks. From helping my toddler daughter heal from histamine and mast cell issues to supporting one of my best friends heal from stage four cancer, I became intimately familiar with the long-term effects of stress on the body, true integrative wellness of the mind, body, and soul. I hope you'll consider following along. As I've shared previously, I'm so grateful to be working with a holistic doctor to solve our root causes. In working with her, I've learned about one important analogy. It is a simple yet profound one to consider. Our body is like a bathtub. I'll use that analogy as a framework for our conversation today while I discuss practical and actionable suggestions to help you do these three things. First, get to know your body. Secondly, make conscious and intuitive consumption choices. And three, support your body's ability to process it all. Most people tend to skip the first step as they just want to know what to eat, what medicine to take, and what supplements have helped others so that they can be on the other side of it already. Some do dig a bit deeper in their quest for understanding, but I'd like to suggest that this is the most important place to start. Most people, myself included, started by looking to see what's been inherited via DNA using tools like 23andMe or Ancestry.com. While we do inherit a genetic blueprint, our internal and external environment over a lifetime determines what gets expressed. I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume if you're watching this video, it's because you or someone you love or care for has some things that are activated that clearly are not ideal for their overall wellness. Imagine the power of knowing what you're likely working with based on your genetic blueprint. I'll give you a few specific examples throughout this video of what I have learned from my DNA tests and how it's helping me tailor my approach to healing my specific body. You see, the size of our bathtub is determined by our genetics and our epigenetics. For those not familiar with the term epigenetics, I've done a couple videos if you want to get an understanding in greater detail. However, whenever talking about our genes or genetic variants, I always want to emphasize that we are not victims of our genes. They are simply our genetic blueprint. And the science and research of the field of epigenetics proves that we can impact our internal chemistry, which determines which genes get turned on or off. You have the power to optimize your body. One resource that was crucial for me to understand more about my body and what could be off balance is the book Dirty Genes by Ben Lynch. He walks through the main genetic variants that you can inherit or activate that cause things to get really out of balance. Honestly, I could do a whole entire video about all of these variants. However, for today, I'm going to focus on one specific example, MTHFR. The reason for this is MTHFR is the methylation master gene. This gene initiates your ability to methylate. Methylation is a key process that affects your stress response, inflammation, brain chemistry, energy production, immune response, detoxification, antioxidant production, cell repair, and genetic expression. It's estimated that somewhere between 40 and 60% of the population have one type of the two main MTHFR variants. So this isn't some small 2% of the population type of situation. If you've done a 23andMe genetic test, there's a really great article with directions on how to log in and see if you have one of the MTHFR variants in your genetic blueprint. I'll include a link in the description box below Quick aside, if you're really into this and want to dig even deeper, I'll include a few other links to look at for potential other variants related to methylation and detoxification, which were very insightful for me. 
Using the site, I learned that I have one variant of each of the two main MTHFR gene mutations. So using this bathtub example, not only is it likely that the size of my bathtub is smaller than the average person without those variants, but my drain to the tub is a bit slower too. I also want to note that thanks to epigenetics, even if you don't carry the blueprint for that variant, if your internal environment gets thrown off balance, then it can become activated. Likewise, I want to reinforce the point that Dr. Ben Lynch makes, which is backed up by science, that even if you have the variants, you can change how your genes express. To the average person, this might sound like a bit of a leap to believe. But for my regular followers, you'll have learned about the term epigenetics in my video about it. We are not victims of our genes. The key to wellness and true empowerment is knowledge backed up by action. So now we know if we optimize our internal environment, we can overwrite our blueprint and ensure our body is operating optimally. While Ben Lynch believes we can do so via diet and lifestyle, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's a prominent voice in the field of epigenetics, asserts that our epigenetics can be changed via hypnosis and energy therapy. Yeah. Now perhaps you can see why a master hypnotherapist is posting health-focused content because it's all connected, especially when it comes to histamine. Imagine if in addition to the work you're doing to heal your body with diet and lifestyle changes, you add in something as simple as a hypnosis session. You can even listen to the recordings before bed and sleep through it, and it will still manage to support you on an epigenetic level. I'm already working with clients to do just this. Even more exciting is that I'm going to show the effectiveness of this approach by working with a lab who is currently testing samples and measuring changes from the first participants in the Stress Resilience Masterclass. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the results as soon as they're available. As I briefly mentioned earlier, the main idea behind the bathtub analogy is that wellness comes from improving input quality and optimizing the processing of the output. This is especially important for myself and many others who have this genetic variant, making our bathtub smaller than most. So essentially, our tubs can physically hold less water than the average healthy person without these variants. What I'm really saying is our bodies can handle less of the things that are not so good for us. Yeah, so if you have the MTHFR variant and some other dirty genes, perhaps you're starting to see how just lessening the input with a low histamine diet isn't truly a long-term solution. That's why I recommend working with a holistic doctor who can look at the big picture to help ensure that you're optimizing the drain as well. So that brings us to our second point, conscious consumption based on knowing our body. The low histamine diet is a short-term tactic to take the pressure off your body. The reality is you're not allergic to these things, and when you uncover what's at the root of your reaction and resolve that, high histamine foods can be added back in within balance and reason. That being said, based on the research I've done to understand my body, as someone who has a dirty MTHFR, I have found out there are three really important things that I should decrease consumption of, and they are folic acid, pesticides and herbicides, and junk ingredients like inflammatory oils and natural flavors. I want to be clear up front that what I intend to share today is not meant to make you afraid of everything, but to give you the information to make intuitive and informed decisions as to what your body needs. There will be practical and actionable examples included. When you choose to apply the information, well, that's true empowerment and a big step on the road to wellness. First, let's look at folic acid. In the United States and in many developed countries, it is required by the FDA or other similar government organizations to fortify foods with a synthetic version of naturally occurring folate called folic acid. Foods that are fortified with folic acid include enriched breads, flours, pasta, rice, cornmeal, and fortified corn masa flour, which is used to make corn tortillas and tamales, for example, as well as certain fortified breakfast cereals. 
While folic acid fortification is intended to be helpful, we are likely consuming far more than what the FDA recommends. Additionally, those of us with the MTHFR variants have a very hard time processing the folic acid and can build up in our systems as unmethylated folic acid. I have other strong feelings about folic acid, and if you're curious to hear my full thoughts, let me know in the comment box below and I'll bump that video up on my list. One main pillar of a low histamine diet is to go gluten-free. One reason doing so may provide relief is that gluten-free products are not required to fortify with folic acid. Interesting, right? What if it's not about the gluten at all? It's just about what's in there is actually a burden to your body. This is a perfect example of why going gluten-free may still not completely stop their reactions. For example, there are gluten-free cereals such as Chex and Cheerios that are fortified with folic acid. I've seen so many people post about how they're doing the low histamine diets and still seem to have reactions, but feel like histamine intolerance is their issue at hand. Maybe they have some non-food triggers as well, or maybe it's something else that's in our foods, because I know one other thing that's in those gluten-free cereals mentioned, pesticides, specifically this one. I made an entire video about this, and it was my least performing video I've ever made. Either the topic wasn't sexy or the algorithm doesn't like me talking about this, so I'm going to limit the usage of the word in this video because the content is just that important. If the product you're consuming contains corn or soy and is not labeled non-GMO or organic, then I can pretty much assure you that you are definitely consuming this guy. It's also found in oat baits products, which includes oat, cereals, oatmeal, granola, snack bars, which are often marketed to young children. Alarmingly, studies have shown that children generally have higher levels of this pesticide in their system than adults. According to The Guardian, other foods with high contamination levels include almonds, beets, beet sugar, canola oil, carrots, corn, corn oil, quinoa, soy products, sweet potatoes, and vegetable oil. An article about the high levels of pesticides in Cheerios is what put it on my radar. I also had a personal wake-up call with my holistic doctor. During our first session, focused on me, she asked, Hey, do you know about... I laughed because I had just gotten into a Facebook argument and got all fired up about an influencer who was spouting that it was safe and there's no scientific proof that it's bad for you. In fact, I was so fired up, I recorded my previous video and posted it. So she says, let's test and see where you are, since it's coming up as an issue. For those people who are new to the channel or may have missed the video about what I've learned from my holistic doctor, she uses muscle testing. The best part of it is it's a really fast way to do analysis while not being slowed down and beholden to slow and expensive lab tests identifying issues and allows for confirmation of the best solutions available as well. So she says, let's take a look on a scale of one to five, one being low, five being max. And she goes, Wow, you're a five. Wow. Isn't intuition amazing though? There's a reason I got so visibly and physically worked up and triggered by that influencer spreading misinformation because my body was shouting at me to get my intention that it's an issue for me. Listen to me. We've traced a call. It's coming from inside the house. A squad car's going over there right now. Just get out of that house. Now, I'm not going to lie that I had a feeling that this was the case, considering my daughter's health, but there's a bit of bliss and ignorance, and I kept holding on. It's another thing to get confirmation, because now I have a choice on how I want to move forward. Do I want to pretend that everything is normal and ignore what I've learned, or do I want to take control of my wellness in a way I've truly never done before? I honestly think this is the decision any of us with histamine or mast cell or honestly any health issues are being called to make because we are not some unique unicorn situation and these issues are just becoming more and more prevalent. We've unknowingly been consuming products with pesticides in our food. It's not a leap to assume that most of us are dealing with this. In fact, just a few weeks ago, The Guardian released an article that shared details about a study that was done on 2,300 Americans in a representative sample. One third of the sample was children between 6 and 18 years old. 
and they found that 80% of the participants had this in their urine. Yeah, 80%. The thing that is different at this point in my life is that I am empowered and connected to my intuition. I don't have to be scared of food or chemicals. I can research and make informed purchases that minimize the load that I could consume by buying non-GMO and organic as much as possible. Also, I can hold something at the store and intuitively ask my body if it's good for me. Our body is just waiting for us to open up that communication. The key is balance. You don't have to be afraid of the food and expect to always be perfect or you'll be sick. If you just lessen your burden most of the time, then you can handle eating out where you'll likely be exposed to cheaper products that are enriched or GMO. Do the best you can and allow yourself to see food as nourishment. If you need help releasing fear and anxiety around food, I created a guided hypnosis session to try it out. I've linked it in the description box below. It was helpful for me and I hope it helps you too. The last point I want to make about conscious consumption is getting informed and reading labels. I have never put that much thought into labels, but I'm learning and getting better thanks to the videos of Bobby Parrish of Flav City. He even has an app that scans labels that can highlight any ingredients that are of concern. I highly recommend checking out his content and to begin taking steps towards decreasing the work that your body has to do. And this is a perfect example of just because something is a gluten-free or organic product doesn't mean that it's good for your body. A lot of them still use cheaper inflammatory oils or natural flavors, but you don't really know what it is and could have a negative impact. So be sure to become informed on what you're consuming. Now, I hope you don't feel hopeless and overwhelmed. This is where you have a choice with this new knowledge that you've received today. Knowledge is power, and you can filter this through your intuition. Are you watching this video because your body is begging you to decrease your input of toxins? Take a deep breath and tune in. Ask yourself from a calm and connected place. Is this important for me? and feel it in your body. No one will know you better than you. So now you're empowered to make informed decisions about what you want to consume. You might be wondering, how can I help my body get rid of what I've accidentally consumed or have consumed in the past? This brings us to our third point of supporting your body's ability to process it. We can visualize this as the drain. We also know that it can be slowed down by MTHFR and other variants we may carry. Additionally, the things we talked about earlier, like, is likely to have an effect on methylation, which is an integral part of the detoxification process and vital to the functioning of the body. So regardless of if you have MTHFR or not, it's going to slow down your drain, but those with MTHFR are even more impacted. In addition to the negative impact that this has a methylation, it causes oxidative stress and neurotoxicity, which means it adversely affects the nervous system. Studies have linked it to neurological conditions such as dementia and autism. I've recently heard about a number of people who've turned around these conditions just by healing the gut. As a quick aside, this is the reason why I say, as a hypnotherapist, I want to help people become resilient to stress, not just emotional or mental stress, but the stress that their body is under with all the toxins. Again, it's all connected. The three things that I do to help support my detoxification pathways are first, supplement vitamins that my body needs. Second, relax and take some Epsom salt baths. And third, using hypnosis for resilience. So for example, this is why I believe so strongly about getting to know your body is that I learned I have a VDR gene mutation that impacts my body's ability to process vitamin D, which is essential in the detoxification process. It was flagged as low when I was pregnant, and it turns out the vitamins I was taking have been doing little to nothing to really truly help me. My holistic doctor found a good D3 and K2 combination option that resonated with me, along with some methyl folate, which is a bioavailable version of folate. I've seen incredible progress just starting there. But this is why what works for me might not work for others. Because if you don't have the same variants like the VDR gene mutation, then that's not your body's challenge in detoxification. It's likely something else. And adding something you don't need could just be adding to your burden. 
The next thing is something I used to intuitively do when I was stressed is to take an Epsom salt bath. I now do one at least once a week as it's a great way to get some magnesium in your body. Magnesium plays a vital role in brain health, including stress and anxiety by blocking stimulating neurotransmitters and binding us to calm, restful receptors in the brain. Magnesium can help us relax. I use a magnesium lotion on my toddler daughter before bed to help her relax at night as well. When I'm particularly overwhelmed, I schedule a float tank session at my local favorite space. The flotation tank solution contains an extremely high concentration of salt between 25 and 35%. It always leaves me feeling refreshed and reset. They also have an infrared sauna there, which is really great for detoxifying. Really any kind of sweating is a good way to get it out. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the benefits of hypnosis. In deepening the connection with my body and resetting my epigenetics and hypnosis, I've made big steps towards optimizing my system. There are so many ways it can make a difference when it comes to healing and optimizing the body. As I've said before, wellness is made up of a series of steps headed in the right direction. Perhaps this video will inspire you to take an important step. If you're ready to be resilient to stress, deepen your intuitive connection, and have a teammate who's walked in your shoes, then I would be honored to be considered. The links are in the description box below, but be sure to subscribe for other related content coming up, or catch up on related videos like this gem. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.